Thank you, Tom. And I uh, really, really appreciate everybody coming out today. Very nice of you. Uh, we're very, very excited about the beginning of camp. You know, it's all, everybody's very, very optimistic when they start the season off. And you should be. Or you shouldn't be in coaching or you shouldn't be playing playing football if you don't feel it this time of year. But we, we feel like we have a reason to be optimistic. We've got a lot of guys coming back, uh, both sides of the ball. A lot of guys that have got experience playing in the kicking game for us. Uh, I have not had this kind of depth uh, for quite some time in a lot of different schools I've been at. Uh, in the past, particularly here at Tulane, if I got a, one or two guys injured, it was a big drop off to that second guy. Right now, we've got uh, a lot of guys that are bona fide Division One football players, understand our scheme offense, defensively, kicking game. Uh, uh, you know, we had everybody here over the summer. Uh, great group of young men. We've, uh, I think we've, we've established a, a, a dynamite culture here. I, I talked to Tom about it. I think we're, you know, one of the few teams in the country that did not have anybody enter the transfer portal, which is unusual nowadays. But I think that a lot of that credit goes to my coaching staff and and the and the guys that we've recruited and the character that we have in the locker room. Uh, uh, so we're excited about it. Had a good practice uh, uh, this morning. Uh, we'll be going in the morning quite a bit. Tom, I know we'll give you the information on that. We'd love to have you come out and watch practice and, and report on us. Uh, we're just uh, uh, always uh, appreciative of all the coverage that you, you give us. Because uh, uh, for us to take that next step, uh, we need that. So thank you all very much. So I'll, I'll open it up for questions. And you kind of, um, you know, to, to get to where you are now with the depth, it's been careful recruiting, bringing in some transfers and things like that, and changing the culture and all. It, can you talk about the process to get where you are? Because it wasn't an overnight thing to get the depth and to get the quality that you have now. No, you're right. It definitely wasn't an overnight, overnight deal. You know, we, we talk about three things in our program. Number one, recruit. And the first thing we look at is character, to be honest with you. And, and then you start looking at athletic ability and academic prowess and how they'll fit here on, on this campus and in the city of New Orleans. And second thing we talk about is retaining guys. And we want to have a culture that they feel comfortable in. You know, we can't be everything to everyone as far as playing time and things like that. But you treat people fairly, you know, they're, they're going to run through a wall for you. And, and then, uh, you know, last but not least, you know, when you, you, recruit, you recruit them, you, you retain them, you got to develop them as a football player. We do that in the weight room. We do it in the meeting room. I feel like I've got a lot of really good coaches that are that are uh, uh, superior teachers. And uh, the best coaches are teachers and vice versa. And, and, uh, and we've had a lot of continuity. You know, this is my fourth season. I've got one scholarship guy on the team who was here before I was here. Normally you'd have 20. 25 guys going into your fourth year that were on the team, some guys that have been redshirted. We haven't had that luxury to, to redshirt very many guys. And, and uh, you know, they're, they're, it's, it's just been tough sledding to, uh, with a couple of recruiting classes a few years back. So uh, that's unusual. So we're really a young team. And uh, uh, that, that's, that bodes well for the future. And, and you know, I, I, my goal when I came in here was to – uh, help make Tulane a consistent winner on the football field. And there's been some great players that have played here at Tulane. They've had some great teams here at Tulane, just have not done it consistently year after year after year. You know, I talk about these things with our players. Uh, uh, you know, one of our goals every year is going to be to go to a bowl game. We accomplish that this year. It'll be the first time since 1979-80 that it's happened back-to-back you win a bowl game this year, it'll be the first time in the history, 126 year history of the school it's occurred. You know, uh, so uh, to do it consistently, you gotta work hard every day, you gotta recruit the right guys, you gotta keep them here, and you gotta develop them. And I, I feel like we've done that with our guys. Coach, uh, what is it about 
What attracted you to Will Hall, and what do you think he sort of brings to this offense? You know, I've known Will a long time. Uh, when I was uh, the head coach at Central Missouri, we played against him quite a few years ago. And I even looked at recruiting him. You know, I was, I was one of those guys who didn't think he was going to be able to play for me. You know, <laughs> he was National Junior College Player of the Year, and he's five foot uh, eight or whatever he is. And I had a quarterback who was all right. You know, and I thought, ah, I don't know if he'd be able to beat this guy out. So I didn't take him. I should have. You know, he went to North Alabama, and he's a Harlan Hill Award winner, which is the Heisman Trophy winner for Division II level. And so I just started watching his career as a coach. And he was at a small school called Southwest Baptist that played in the same league as Central Missouri where I was at. And we had much uh, better talent than what they had. And I thought we were, you know, I was, I was a head coach and the D coordinator at the time. And I didn't think they'd score a point on us. And scored four touchdowns and gained about 350, 400 yards on us. And we were much better than they would, were. I think I might have had Delaney Walker playing for me at the time. He was playing with the Titans. But uh, I just noticed then that, you know, uh, hey, this guy knows what he's doing. And uh, so I just kind of followed him. And and because, uh, you know, he was a, he's a great Division II coach. He had uh, outstanding uh, clubs at West Georgia and West Alabama. And a lot of times those guys kind of bounce ideas off me because I came from there. I had a JUCO coach, Division II, one double A. And, they kind of want to know how you get up to this level. And so I know a lot of those guys. And, uh, you know, I just knew if I, if I uh, made a change, he was the guy I was going to go after. He was the only person I interviewed. And if I wouldn't have got him, I would have had some <laughs> – I would have start looking at some other dudes, you know. But uh, luckily I got him. Coach, I know that uh, when you first got here, you want to build the culture, recruiting, and obviously – find sustained success is the mentality still I guess prove people wrong or get to a certain point or now that you've gotten to a bowl game is it prove that we can have sustained success is the mentality any different than I guess from when you first got here to now do you approach it any different with the players that you belong here now is you know now that you've proven it well but first thing I told them in our initial team meeting last night is this is a 2019 team whatever we did in 2018 doesn't mean anything and, you know, we, we've just scratched the surface of the, the goals we want to, you know, uh, accomplish here. we got a long way to go. And, and you know, uh, going seven and six and, and uh, winning a bowl game, that was not, you know, the, what we're looking for. We wanted to continue to keep building this program. And, uh, you know, I, I, I just believe you can do it here at Tulane. You know, we've got world-class academics to sell. We play in a great conference. You know, and I think most of you have seen us play, and it's, it is a great conference. It really is. And uh, so that helps you out. And, and then last but not least, you get to do it in the number one destination city of, of New Orleans. So we can recruit people here, and we're, we're getting better every year with recruiting. And I think a lot of that's the continuity of our staff and, and knowing what we, we uh, need to go out and get and who's going to fit in here as a football player and as a student and as a person. Uh, but, you know, our guys have got uh, a lot of confidence coming into camp. Uh, you know, we, we uh, I had a guest speaker last night who's good friends with uh, John Gordon. And uh, two years ago when we got beat in the last game of the year and we thought we scored and all these other things, it was, it was tough sledding when we came back after Christmas, you know, getting the guys pumped up. And we actually read a book as a team called The Energy Bus by John Gordon. And just to get our guys in a positive frame of mind and flushing the, that last play against SMU down the toilet. And the guys bought into it. And, and then we had the success last year. And even though we started off two and five, you didn't see anybody pointing fingers in the locker room or in the coaches' uh, meeting rooms or, or whatever. Everybody's uh, got a good positive vibe here. Coach, you, uh, you mentioned the outgoing or no outgoing transfers. What's the process like to bring guys in? What's, what do you look for? You know, first of all, they got to fit in and, and with our culture here. And, uh, you know, I think it's uh, pretty uh, indicative of, the, of the, the guys, the culture that we have here, the guys we brought in. You know, I just brought in a guy here the other day from Arizona State. He graduated, 3.4 student. He wants to come here because he wants to get into med school, you know, and – and then the guy from Virginia, he would have probably stayed there at Virginia, except he wants to get his MBA, he already graduated, and they, they can't do it there because they practice in the afternoon. That's when all the classes are offered. You know, there are two guys from uh, Brown and Columbia 
The reason why they came here is because they don't allow you to, to uh, play football in the Ivy League if you've already graduated. You know, and they wanted to get their MBA too here at Tulane. So that helps us with guys like this uh, that are wanting to move on and play, and, and, they, and they fit in, you know, with our, with our culture here. Those are the kind of guys we want to have here. You know, we're, we're going to build this program, you know, 95% with high school guys. There's no doubt about that. So we're very selective when we bring a transfer guy in. Coach, Justin McMillan at quarterback, would you talk about his growth from last year to this year? And also, he said when he went to the Manning Passing Academy, he was like a sponge, and he just took it all in. So from that experience and the time you've had to talk to him since then, uh, what else besides his growth from last year, what else did he get at that Manning Passing Academy that's going to help him this year? Well, you know, number one, we're blessed that, you know, Mr. Manning, well, you know, calls and asks who I want to have go there. And, and obviously he knows who Justin is from following uh, Tulane in, in, in our football program and all that. But, but he had a riot there. You know, you have the top 40 quarterbacks in the country. I believe he certainly is one of them. And uh, he did a great job down the stretch for us, 5-1. and one. He's got experience now. He hadn't played that much at, at – at uh, the, the school that he was at previously. And, uh, you know, he, he's done a great job for us. And he, he's kind of in Coach Hall's hip pocket all the time. They've got a tremendous relationship. And I, I really think Will's doing a super job, and Will do this year, of spotlighting his talents and making sure that we highlight that, you know, game after game after game. I, I think a guy's going to have a great senior year and, and – uh, have an opportunity to continue to keep playing after he gets done with us. Uh, but I, I just think experience is the big th thing. He's just, he knows what we're doing inside and out. He knows the guys. You know, what, what a disadvantage to walk in the door of a locker room five days before the first game and you've been someplace else for three years. You know, and, and we can't spend much time with him. I, I didn't, you know, you know, I talked to him on the phone a couple times before he came here. You know, normally you, you, you get to know the kid pretty good before you recruit him. So I think just the, the uh, experience of being here is going to help him out tremendously. Amari Jones had a terrific year as a kick returner last year, showed some flashes at running back. But how big of a jump are you expecting from him? As I, a, I think as he's going to have a huge jump. He's a stud now. I mean, this guy can make people miss, and, and he just – he, you know, he's a, uh, incredible, uh, he's got an incredible football IQ. You know, you tell him something, he goes out and does it. And he's a complete player. You know, he can block. You know, if you wanted to send him down the field on a kickoff, he'd tackle somebody. You know, he's uh, ru he runs great routes. We're going to put him out there at receiver quite frequently. He's, a, he can re he's great in the return game. He was a quarterback in high school. You know, we may throw the ball with him occasionally. You know, so there's a bunch of stuff that he can do. And, and I think everybody saw that the last few ball games. You know, he's a guy that's got to – he's got to touch the ball, you know, 10 to 15 times a game, either with, you know, catching the ball, running the ball out of the backfield or, or uh, you know, uh, punt returns, kick returns. You know, he's, he's, he's a, a really explosive football player. Willie, not a lot of schools have the depth that you have at running back. Uh, is there, uh, you know, you're going to kind of share the load. How are you going to work that with, with kind of getting everybody involved? I know Bradwell is your guy, but, but I mean, you've got a lot of guys yeah. that uh, there's not a lot of drop off. Yeah, we're, we're, we're loaded back there. You know, I, I think we've got one of the best uh, backfields in the country with, with Darius, who went for almost 1,200 yards last year. Uh, you know, and then uh, Corey uh, Dauphine had a tremendous year for us. Got banged up, missed a few games, but he had over 750 yards rushing, and six yards of carry. And, you know, Stefan Hudderson's played a lot of football for us. Amari uh, Jones is another guy to get in there. Uh, Cam Carroll, we played the last few games of the year. He's Mississippi High School Player of the Year. And then, you know, another guy that's had a great camp for us is Tajay Spears from right down the road. And he's, he's going to uh, – he gonna play a bunch for us. He's uh, he's he he and Amari are kind of that same type of guy, you know, Swiss Swiss Army knife kind of player. They can they can do everything. They can catch a ball. They can 
They can block. They can, I mean, he, he's another guy. I'm going to have him work on running down the field and doing some coverage too, uh, uh, return punts, kicks. So, uh, yeah, we, we got a lot of dudes back there. Coach, you mentioned this is a different year, but yet just about everywhere you've been, you've been able to sustain success. Uh, how do you carry over the way last season ended into last spring and now into the fall and, and be able to, to maintain what it was you, you did in the second half of 2018? Well, it gives you more momentum, obviously, you know, end of the year, coming back, getting the guys working. But, you know, you, you just got to approach uh, – Work, being a being a head coach, uh, being an assistant coach, uh, being a football player, you got to be consistent with your work ethic every single single day. I'm very structured in what we do. There's not very many surprises in our football program. Uh, you know, if I had guys that played for me 10 years ago, they'd come out and they they kind of recognize a lot of the things we're doing. I I adapt and improvise and change based on the the university I'm at, obviously, but. We're very consistent in what we do, and we expect great effort from our guys in, in all facets of their life, you know, and whether it's over and down on campus or, you know, here with, uh, with football. And, and a lot of that goes back to recruiting the right guys that, that fit into your culture. And that's what our culture is all about. We're consistent with it every day. Coach, can you comment on the defense? Uh, do you think it'll be better than last year? Yeah, I think we have an opportunity to be really good on defense. We're deep and talented on the defensive line. I don't know if I've had, you know, this talent of a defensive line before. Uh, you know, we're probably going to play six, seven guys up there up front in those three positions for us. Uh, second level I feel really good about as well with our linebacking core. Uh, we're we're going to need to find a guy or two in there to – to, to, to be that next guy. You know, last year we kind of rolled three guys at the inside linebacker position. One of them's gone, Zach Harris, who had a great season for us. And then we're really deep in the secondary. But as I talked about before, we lost two great players back there. You know, Donnie Lewis and Rod Team are two guys who I think are going to make NFL rosters. So we got to, you know, replace those guys, but it's got to be by committee. There's, uh, I'm, I'm sure these first uh, three, four ball games, we'll play. Uh, you know, 18, 20 guys on defense, you know, maybe more than that. And then you start figuring it out and you start, you know, this guy's going to be playing more than this guy. You know, I think early in the season it's important for you to, to play a lot of guys anyway just because, you know, you, you, we've been running like crazy all summer. We went out there and had practice with the helmet on today and it didn't look like we've been running like crazy all summer. You know, football conditioning is different than – going out there after you get done lifting weights or before you go out there and lift weights. So we try to make it as close as we can to a game-like situation. So it takes you a few games to, to really get into the type of uh, shape that you need to, to be in in order to play, you know, 100%, play in and play out. Any other questions? Once again, thanks for coming. Appreciate it.